Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. I mean, just breathe in the air from heaven. My guest, in my opinion, and many others, is a modern day, spirit-filled, evangelical Mother Teresa. I mean, she is seeing miracles like we just read about in the Bible. She's seeing the dead raised. She's seeing people with uh, that are blind, no, no pupils, just white. And before her eyes, she can see the eye shape and they can see naturally. The deaf here, food mu multiplying. And she's told me her secret and you're about ready to receive it. Her secret is lavish love. So Heidi is coming from a, a non a church going, but a non born again home. And at 16, she has a radical encounter with God. Uh, describe it in a couple of sentences. Well, I was on an Indian reservation and I met the Lord Jesus as my personal savior. The next night I went to a little Pentecostal church. It was like being on the moon for me. I'd never seen anything like it. I was filled with Holy Spirit and they taught me how to fast and pray. So in May, um, I was on a five day fast. It was the fifth day and they were playing loud in this tiny church, loud pianos were going. And I just lifted my hands and I was just worshiping and suddenly I couldn't hear the preacher. I couldn't hear the pianos. I was just covered in this light, um, this glory light. And I heard the only time in my entire life, I heard the external audible voice of God. He said, you're called to be a minister and a missionary to go to Africa, Asia, and England. And but, I, but wait a second. Her parents, they're not believers. T t between you and me, did they think you were a little mashuga, a little nuts? <laughs> totally. Totally. They, <laughs> um, they tried to get uh, help with a psychiatrist. They said they would get me yeah, But there, there's a reason. Do you yes. know what Heidi was doing? Uh, as a 16-year-old and a woman, uh, she, she couldn't go to a church to preach, and God's just called her to preach. So she preaches to Alzheimer's patients. She preaches to drug addicts. She preaches to anyone breathing. Uh, but then <laughs> another major event in your life, you went out to Vanguard University at 18, and you had an open vision. What happened? Um, well, there was a man preaching, and I thought he was a bit arrogant uh, because he was saying God had given him a city, and I didn't believe God did that. I didn't think God gave people cities cities. And as I was really judging him, and I was in charge of ministry, so I had to take him out to lunch. And I was judging him, but I was, was kind of smiling like, you know, but I was thinking this guy, he's not really there. And suddenly I saw an angel on the right, an angel on the left, and Jesus stood behind him and pointed to me, this man's telling the truth, listen to him. And I, I felt I fell down in, and started weeping. I never got to my classes that day. I crawled to the back of the chapel to the um, prayer room and I just worshiped and worshiped just with all that is within me. And I said, God, if you're giving someone a city, I want a nation. I want a nation. And I just... Now, Heidi, <laughs> you didn't even realize what you were praying no. right there because <laughs> Heidi, a few months later, finds herself married finds herself jumping on a plane, finds herself with $30 trying to follow the call that God had for her. <laughs> she ends up in Mozambique, uh, Africa, 
and, uh, and, and is serving God with the best of her ability for what, 30 years? Um, almost 20. We started oh, uh, in Asia. Okay, almost 20 years. She, she's burned out, sick. Her and her husband are coming back. Uh, and they hear about a meeting in Toronto, Canada. They go to the congregation there, the airport church it was called at that time, uh, and uh, it cost them, uh, they call it a million dollar meeting because <laughs> someone, a, a man that was supporting them of a, the tune of a million dollars a year said, you go to that meeting, I won't give you money for your orphans. Uh, but, but they went because they were so desperately hungry. Randy Clark was speaking. What happened? Well, um, he, I, I heard him speaking about spending your life and being spent like change and just giving everything to God and just determined to, to spend yourself on Jesus. And he was speaking about this. And I was in the very back, very, very back middle of the church. And I couldn't stand it. I couldn't wait for an altar call. I was very, you know, embarrassed about what I did in the natural, but I pushed my way out of the crowd and I ran to the front right in the I, middle. I heard about a woman I with did. an issue of blood that did the same thing. Was I was like that. <laughs> okay. I was desperate. I had to have more of God and I wanted God to use me and I wanted to see what this man was preaching about happened in my life. And so I just ran to the front of the meeting, I ran to the altar and I just lifted my hands up and I, I probably was disturbing. Um, <laughs> and, and that's embarrassing for me, but he just laid hands on me and he said, God wants to know, do you want the nation Mozambique? The, and then he said, the blind will see, the cripple will, will walk, the deaf will hear, and the poor will hear the good news. God wants to know, do you want the nation Mozambique? And I, I still remember it right now. I, I didn't think, I, if I had thought about it, I would have screamed no. But, but I, I was like, oh. I mean, you, you have to understand, <laughs> Heidi and her husband have PhDs. Uh, she comes from a, a very well-to-do type of family in California. Uh, Mozambique is not <laughs> quite like your background, is it? No, we had already been there a year. I mean, we had 320 children. We, we were hungry most of the time. Um, we were being shot at. It was very hard. I thought Africa, Asia, and England. We did Asia 12 years, England three years. We've been in Africa one. Maybe that's enough. Maybe that's the vision fulfilled. I want to work at Kmart. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I seriously, no one's going to shoot at me. Blue light. Blue but, light, but Heidi, that was it. <laughs> seven, listen to this, seven days and seven nights, the glory of God is on her to the point that, you, from what I understand, you couldn't walk, you couldn't even go to the restroom yourself. You were totally, the fire of God was on you. Explain. I was totally, completely incapacitated. I, I love to go fast. I like speed. I like running. I like pushing. You know, I like fast. And God literally stuck me to the ground. I, I couldn't move. I couldn't move my head. Um, some people laughed. They thought it was a little funny. It wasn't funny at all um, for me. I, I didn't know if I would ever walk again. Um, but I was so undone just by the love of Jesus, just by his passion. Your eyes are tearing uh, up. Why, I, why are I, they tearing up right because now? Because when I'm speaking of this time, I'm putting myself in that place. And, and I'm remembering just that heavy, weighty glory of God. It changed my life. At first, I was burned. I felt like I was going to die. I was burning. I was I was screaming. I'm sure I was getting delivered of things I didn't even know I needed um, to be set free from. But I was, I was burning at first, and I was thinking, I'm going to die. And I cried out to God, I'm going to die. And he said, good, I want you dead. <laughs> good, I, I want, want you dead. dead. Well, and let me ask you something. <laughs> so Heidi has this prophetic call, the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the, 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 the dead will be raised. She gets back to Mozambique, and she prays for everyone living, everyone that crosses her path. And guess how many blind people got healed after the first year? Zero. <laughs> we'll come right back. I want to find out what happened. <laughs>
be right back to It's Supernatural! If you love watching our It's Supernatural! TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural! So for a year, I mean, if you had had that word and nothing, nothing happens for a year, uh, most people would have given up. But not Heidi. A year later, she finds a woman. Her name just happens to be, in Portuguese, Heidi. She prays for this woman. She gets her sight back. Next day, she finds another blind woman. Her name just happens to be in Portuguese, Heidi. She prays for that woman. She gets her sight back. The third day, she prays for another blind person. Her name just happens to be in Portuguese, Heidi. You're getting it. Okay. And she gets her sight back. But I want you to tell me about no name. Uh, that's a beautiful story. I was just visiting every Monday um, in Mozambique. I visit my village. It's just my local village. I like to keep it real. We have 3,500 kids in our school from there, so I like to see their families. They're living in, in really squalor. And I just sit and hold the poor and just spend time loving on people, just really simply. I go low and slow and spend time. And on my way back from visiting a mama named Tina, I saw this little old woman and she was really um, poor. You know, her, her clothes were shredded and she's sitting, a strange thing, she's sitting in the sun. And I'm thinking, why is anyone sitting in the sun in Mozambique? It's hot. Why, you know, at least she should be in the shade. And I said, Nchina Natipani, what's your name in our local dialect? Nchina Natipani. And she answered me back and she said, I have no name. And I was undone by that. I thought, how can anyone on earth not be given a name? And I saw a woman sitting about the edge of the table away from her, and I said, what is her name? And she said, she has no name. She's blind, and she has no name. And I've often thought about how the believers say people are nameless and faceless, but Daddy God always gives people a name. Daddy God would never say you're nameless or you're faceless or you're blind, you don't matter, you, you're poor, you don't matter. God sees each one of us and he knows all the hairs on our head. And so before I shared the beauty of Yeshua, the beauty of his love, I said, sweetheart, I would like to give you a name. And the name I want to give you is Utelia, which is joy and you exist. Joy in you exist. And she like just, that. it was beautiful. Utelia in Makua. And she opens her mouth like, and she has like about four teeth. They're just dangling down. She doesn't, she's very old and her teeth are just dangling, but she's laughing with joy. And I asked the woman down, down a ways from her to call her by name. And she calls her Utelia and she's so happy. And then I just said, I, I believe that, that Jesus wants to just heal your eyes. And there's no cameras, there's no razzmatazz, there's no lights, there's no flyers, there's just the poor and the love of God and just sitting there. And I just hugged her and the mercy of God hit this woman, her eyes turned brown. Just, it was so beautiful. It's just so low and slow. The beauty of Jesus, just what were, were he does. Were you watching it turn uh, yeah, white, yes. brown? It's just her, they go white, gray, brown. They just, and she's opening her eyes and she's looking around. She can see, now this lady can see, she can see. And we're just in this heat in the, 
a very extraordinarily poor area and the joy of the Lord hits her. Then I tell her about what Jesus did for her and how daddy God loves her and would give her a name and how beautiful she is. And of course she met Jesus. I mean, how could she not? And it was that just... That lavish love is really... It's <laughs> Nothing it's can deal against it. <laughs> but, but I have to ask you this. Heidi is willing to be childlike in her faith. She goes to a meeting. God tells her to stand on her head. Then a man comes and says, God's telling me to pour water all over your head. She's standing on her head and water's being poured all over her head. She goes back to Mozambique and finds out that's a prophetic sign. The floods came, but the floods of not just water, what happened? Well, first of all, I can't stand on my head. So I didn't just stand on my head. I was knocked onto my head, like by the power of Holy you. Spirit. I am seriously, the first thing I thought, thank you, Jesus, I have trousers on. Um, <laughs> that's seriously, because can you imagine? I did not want to, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't stand on my head anywhere. I wouldn't think, she has I a PhD. I, <laughs> no, I can't stand on my head. I, t I was knocked up onto my head uh. and the Lord showed me two things. First of all, the man speaking was speaking about apostolic anointing and I was agitated because I'll, I've seen a lot of arrogance around the word, extraordinary arrogance. And I'm thinking, do we need to curtsy? You know what? When they hand you the card, you know, I'm apostle this or not. I'm just being honest with you. And, and as he's speaking about apostolic anointing, the Lord lifts me up onto my head and, he, and he's sharing with me apostolic's the lowest place. It's the lowest place. It's you go the lowest, you're the slowest and the lowest. And then this man came up to me and said, can I pour water down your feet? I thought, why do you have to be polite right now? You know, I'm on my head. I can't, I mean, <laughs> what's the, whatever. I, I think I said to you, him, you know, whatever. She, she can't make this up, am I, <laughs> I right? I can't, no, and it's embarrassing. And I think they have cameras around. And I seriously, thank you, Jesus, of trousers. Now I'm gonna be sopping wet and I'm on my head. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking maybe they'll take away my PhD if they caught it on video. <laughs> like, this is serious. And the guy just, doesn't doesn't have a nice little gentle small bottle of water. No, he has a huge bottle of water, <laughs> and he just pours this all down on top of me. And now I'm sobbing, I'm sobbing. I am being hit up and crashed down. And I wrote this song: Lord, take me and use me, bruise me if need be. White fields of harvest, children are crying, people are dying. I written this song years ago, and I was bruised from my head to my toe after this powerful event where I was up on my head, down to my feet, up on my head, down to my feet. It lasted over 20 minutes. And the Lord really showed me, it's a cup of suffering, it's a cup of joy, it's the lowest place. And then these crazy floods came, no joke. I'll tell you what, hold that, because literally whole cities got saved. We'll be right back. Right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. So Heidi returns after that prophetic experience with water being poured on her, and she comes back to the nation of Mozambique, and in the north there had never been flooding in the natural, and there was devastating flooding but there was also flooding of the Spirit of God. What happened, Heidi? Well, um, the first flood happened in the south in Maputo, and it went all the way into Gaza, and it actually rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Mm. It was in the papers. It was crazy. Children were being born in trees. Um, the roads were all completely gone, and whole cities, whole villages were covered with water. 
And what used to take us months and weeks, you know, to get to a huge amount of people, suddenly the UN was saying, um, they would call me mama. They'd say, mama, how many helicopters do you need today? <laughs> and um, I would say three, or I would say four. One day I said seven. And they would let us fill these helicopters with medical people, with preachers, ministers of the gospel. We would get to take um, Bibles. We would get to take food, supplies, and we would be drop down into the middle of these huge refugee camps and the people were so hungry for God. They wanted to receive Bibles. They wanted to receive ministry before food. And instead of us planting like three, four churches a year, it went to a few hundred churches were planted in a year. Um, just huge, massive move of the spirit. It was really powerful. So the, the water um, being wet, being sopped in a church and on my head is totally worth it for tens of thousands of people coming to say. Jesus. I would say. Now, tell yeah. me, there, there is a term you use. You say this is the secret, if you will, to how God uses you. And the term you use is lavish love. What's the word lavish mean? Extraordinary, you? abundant, uh, beyond Hofung fuga in Cantonese. Now I know. <laughs> like beyond, beyond. It's lavish. It comes from the Father. And this... uh, would you talk to the camera for a couple minutes and yes. tell them about this lavish love and how they can have it? And yes. I want to get in on it too. The lavish love of God, if you would just spend some time just in the secret place, lis listen to Father, listen to Daddy God. He wants to say your name. No one's nameless and no one's faceless. We're all called to come and live in the Father's house. So I just pray that you would feel the very pre holy presence of your Father who calls you by name, who speaks to your name and fills you with radical love and lets you know that he loves you and that he'll never, ever, ever let you go. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. There's such an awesome presence of God here right now. I believe anything mm -hmm. is possible. I heard people with arthritis and pain in their hands and wrists. You're being healed mm -hmm. and back right now in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, this is eternal mm -hmm. life that you might have experiential knowledge of me. Mm -hmm. And anything short of that is not your inheritance because you are lavishly loved. Make Jesus your Messiah and Lord. Believe he died for your sins. Believe that when you repent, he wipes them away as if they never existed before. Believe that he's your Lord. Believe that he lives inside of you and say it out loud right now. Next week on It's Supernatural. When you go into the average church that believes in miracles and you say, I want you to be honest, raise your hand if you'd like to be physically healed. 98% of the hands go up. God spoke to my guest, Benny, and told her how to fix it. Are you interested? Yeah. Me too.